بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على سيدنا ونبينا محمد وعلى آله الطيبين الطاهرين واللعنة الدائمة الأبدية على أعدائهم أجمعين لا قيام يوم الدين أعظم الله وجورنا وجوركم يا الله سبحانه وتعالى make your rewards great in the mark of the Amir al-Mu'minin عليه الصلاة والسلام and we offer our condolence to our beloved Imam عجل الله تعالى فرجه الشريف uh, on this great tragedy tragedy of Amir al-Mu'minin عليه الصلاة والسلام uh, <coughs> We will continue. As for majlis, uh, you have plenty places. They have majlis in English online. So you can, uh, uh, there are many, many amazing lectures available, uh, much better than me. So inshallah, you can approach uh, the, those lecturers online. And also there are Arabic majlis. However, Swedish majlis as a majlis, inshallah, there are very few places. Inshallah, we will have uh, uh, our majlis at 8 o'clock, inshallah, after 29 minutes, with the light ta'ala, hopefully I'm done by then, uh, <clears throat> with the continuation of Tafsir Surah Yasin and the majlis, inshallah. So, so stay tuned. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Rabbi shrah li sadri wa asli amri wa ahlul uqdatan min lisani yafqan qawli. Today, inshallah, we are going to have uh, Surah Yasin, lesson 20. Uh, we, because of the shortage of shortage of time, we were only able to reach until ayat 65. Uh, ayat 65, we mentioned that Allah subhanahu wa taala seals the mouth. So now, which are what are the testimonies? Who are going to testify? Not you. You will not testify your mouth. However, your tongue will testify against you. Your eyes will testify against you. They will be speaking, talking, whatever they are doing. Your body parts will testify against your crimes. So everything in your body is going to testify uh, in your hands and your feet. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala here mentions that we are going to see their mouth. Even though your tongue is going to talk, but not under your control. The tongue is talked by its own control. Allah will give uh, the, the tongue a will and a way to communicate. Now it will be a Mickey Mouse or a holographic uh, thing will come out of your hand or your mouth or your eyes that you are going to show uh, the, the, that your eye is going to show you, see, what were you doing with my eyes? You're watching haram videos, or uh, your tongue is going to talk, huh? you're backbiting using me, or like holographic thing, whatever. It is a way Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala can do that can allow everything the way he allowed the tree to speak to Prophet Musa alayhi salatu salam, or the sound waves are coming from the tree or from the, from the fire or from the surroundings. And God was talking. So God can create the, they allow these uh, creations, his creations to, to talk and communicate with the, the people. <clears throat> okay. So now we know. Now there was a question that why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says that the hands will speak and the feet will testify. So what is the difference between feet and testify? Without any doubt, every single word kept. The choices of the word in the Quran has wisdom of Allah behind it. However, we human are incapable with our limited capacities to understand these wisdoms, wisdoms completely. The masums, salam, the infallibles, our Prophet salam, and the Imams, salam, they can tell us. So whatever had reached us, uh, we can. Other than that, we can always have probabilities and speculations and God knows best. Some of them, they said that because <clears throat> hands, when they're going to testify, how they're going to testify, they will speak. And feet, when they're going to testify, how will they testify? They will speak. So speaking and testifying are both same. However, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wants to tell us that the testimony will be in the form of speaking and not on that hol holographic, uh, maybe holographic speaking or whatsoever. Uh, the thing is that there will be a talk. So Allah wants to re uh, tell us in two ways that there will be speaking and this speaking will be testifying against you. If Allah says that to kalimuna, that the hands will be speaking, so speaking what, ya Allah? So we, they will be testifying, but there's no use, word testi testification mentioned here. Uh, though Allah kept the word testimony with the feet. So they both are combined together. So speaking and testimony are two forms of one thing, that there will be testimony in the form of speaking. God knows best. And there are others, they have different directions and we are not going to deep in detail because we have short of time. But for us at this point, we need to know this point, 
that every single body part which has committed sin is going to speak against us. Okay, every single body part which has committed crimes is going to speak against us. We mentioned this yesterday. We stopped here. Uh, I'm going to talk about these two ayat in three levels. One, we are going to take literally, then we are going to take what is the indication of the Mufassirin and what does Ayatollah Nasir Makarim choose. If we want, if we want, if we wished, if we had will, okay? But we did not, we did not. We would have wiped their eyes, blotted out, no eye. So you will see that, where's my eye? There's no eye. You must have seen some of those animated movies or, or cartoons that are people, they don't have eyes, you see? Uh, and some of the cartoons, they have eyes on their hand and something like that. So picture somebody who doesn't have eyes without eye. What a painful situation. If somebody has eyes and cannot see, it's painful, painful. And having no eyes, so Allah said, we, we could go extra punishment. We would have done that as well. Then they would go and race to the sirat. Okay? They, they, they just want to know where is the sirat? Where is the sirat? They, they can't see. So, how can they know where is the sirat? So they will be dumped into the hellfire not given opportunity to even walk on the sirat, on the, on the straight path. Again, there are two wills. If I ask you how many will Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala had in this for the mujrimin, but he did not do to all the mujrims. He did not do to all the criminals, but he could. He says, if I want, I could. Why? Because the ayat is talking to the criminals. Separate yourself. Oh, criminals, you don't belong with the believers. You don't belong with the nice people. So Allah is addressing the criminals. So criminals are several types. Some are very filthy criminals like, uh, like Abu Jahl, Fir'aun, Abu Lahab, and Namrud, and all, all those who are like these. Like Yazid also is included in this. And there are some lower level, I mean, uh, lesser crimin uh, criminal activities. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, if we wanted, we would have dealt with all the criminals who are going to go to Jahannam the same way these criminals have, are being dealt with. This is a very important technical point. I want you to focus with me. God knows best. We're trying to just understand. So, so therefore, their criminals are level. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is addressing all the criminals. Even though few criminals, Allah will remove their eyes and let them wander like crazy and trying to find out where the sirat is and being dumped into the hellfire. Okay? But not all the criminals out of his mercy. He says, he tells the criminals, all the criminals, if we wanted, if we had wished, if we had willed, we would have blotted your eyes, totally removed your eyes. Then you would try to see, seek, where is Sirat? Where is Sirat? You're, 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 you're racing for the Sirat. You're chasing, uh, looking for the Sirat. You see, you cannot find it and you dump into the hellfire. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala would not have given you opportunity. So this is all the mujrimin. <clears throat> Allah gave them opportunity in this world to find the Sirat. But there are people they chose Remember the, the subhanallah, look at the link between beginning of Surah Yasin and we are ending the Surah Yasin. Um, uh, remember those, whose chins are like that. Uh, and then uh, the, the second one, وَجَعَلْنَا مِنْ بَيْنِ أَيْدِيهِمْ سَدَّمْ We kept a wall in front of them, barrier. They cannot go front. We kept wall behind them. They cannot go back. We blinded them because they chose. So there are a few stubborn ones they will go through these kind of conditions, painful punishment on the day of judgment. But not all of them, not all of them, not all the mujrimin, okay? Not all the mujrimin. These are the mujrimin, the, these are not from those mujrimin whom Allah kept barrier in front camp. Those mujrimin whom Allah kept barrier in front, barrier from behind, they are going to face, the, the, according to some of the other verses of the Quran, they are going to face worse kind of punishment. But not all the mujrimin. 
not all the criminals. Okay? This is a point to focus. That's why the ayah says, Afala yaqilun. These are ayat to ponder, to reflect. So that is number one. If we wanted, we would have removed their eyes and they would have like uh, uh, ran here and there to chase, to find out, uh, to race for the sirat. They, couldn't, they, could, they could not see where the sirat is. So eventually they will fall into the pit. No chance given. There are people, they did not want. So Allah will, but not all the mujrimi. Other thing, if we wanted to do, we would have made them paralyze them, make them stone, we would give them uh, fix them, we would not let them move. Total paralysis. They, they want to move, they cannot. They want to go in front, they cannot. They want to go behind, they cannot. But Allah gave them opportunity. But not all the mujrimi. Here there's an indication of the eternity in the hellfire. If we wanted, all the criminals would have stayed eternally in the hellfire. They would not have gone forward in the uh, fin after finishing their punishment, go forward uh, to the Jannah. Neither they would have returned. Return to who? Return to their family members. But family members in dunya, no. There are some nice beloved ones of their family members waiting for them in the paradise. So we allow them to be interceded and they can go back to their family in the paradise. God knows best. These are, we are trying to see this, the probabilities trying to connect the ayat together and try to come with the flow, the sequence. The sequence is sequence of the day of judgment. The Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is addressing the people of the day of judgment. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sealed. This is an accounting thing. Allah showed them this is the hellfire which you are going to then go inside it. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is addressing the criminals. So, so that's why the second one is also, if we wanted, we would have paralyzed. These two meanings focus with me. If you wanted, would would have uh, zapped their eyes, no eyes, then they would not be able to find the sirat. Uh, they will be race, racing to the sirat. They will they hitting each other, you see. And or we, if we would have, we just paralyzed them on the sirat, and they would not have moved, and they would have fallen in the pit. They would not go ahead the sirat. They would, not, but we gave them. We gave them, we gave them opportunity after even being in the hellfire, after being punished, they can go and they can carry on with a better life after finishing their punishment, except for the evil ones who are eternally there. And if we want, we would have not even allowed them to return. Now, some scholars, they said, is this ayat. Remember? Uh, the, the zap, the, 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 the sound, the scream from the sky, Okay, the, 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 the trumpet is blown. So people are not able to return. Some of them, they said this. So this is in the dunya. Uh, the problem is that the, the, the ayat is talking about the sequence. And the ayat is talking, if we want it, there Allah had done the zap and they cannot return. Here, Allah says, if we wanted, they, they would not have been able to return. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is trying to tell us something here that, <clears throat> uh, that they are able to go back to their families who are waiting for them in the, in the paradise. Some of the family members were nice. They must have done intercession for them. So Allah allowed the family members to do intercession for their beloved ones. Allah allowed them to finish their punishment and go. So as Allah is trying to say here, if we wanted, all the criminals would have stayed eternally in the hellfire, if we wanted. But we are not going to do so. We are going to do that only for the few people. Those whom we can barrier in front of them, barrier behind them, they are going to have the same thing here. But not all the criminals. So see, there is a hope, there's a mercy that even if somebody goes into hellfire after being cooked and grilled and barbecued and all those kind of things, no, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will give them opportunity because that's the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So, 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 so there is going to be punishment. There is going to be severe punishment. But after some time, there are people that are going to go out. So, so these people like Ibn Muljim, the murder of Imam Ali ibn Abi Talib, -Salam, this is called the worst of the worst who were sent in the beginning of the world till the end of the world. 
Okay, so so this is this these kind of people they are going to be. Ayatollah uh, Nasser Makarim. Now this is general opinion, general theme. Ayatollah Nasser Makarim says, no, these two ayat are talking about the dunya, because Allah Subhanahu wa Taala in dunya, if he wanted, he would have zapped their eyes away, and they would not be able to find the sirat, the straight path. Okay, if Allah wanted, and it was a painful punishment in dunya. If Allah wanted, he would have made them paralyzed. They would not have gone front. They would not have gone, be able to go to their family members back again. Same spot paralyzed, a painful punishment. You want to go home. You want to see your family members. You cannot see. So it's a very painful situation. So therefore, I told Anasir Makar says that if we wanted to punish them in this dunya, we would have. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala punished people. They made them blind like people of Lut. Uh, people of Lut, they they were they were blinded, and uh, they were paral some of them they were paralyzed in their places. They were made stones. Okay, so that means again we come back to that concept. Not all. If we wanted, we would have punished all the criminals in this world. And uh, 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 but we did not these two types of punishment. However, we we did not except for few we did like Ibn Muljim. The murder of Imam Ali ibn Abi Talib والسلام, was converted into a different form. And uh, there are many criminals, they were converted into different form. Many criminals in Quran is mentioned, they were punished and they were stable in their places. They could not move, not they could do anything. So there are people that have been punished with these two types of punishments in the Quran in this world. However, Ayatollah Nasser might be meaning that all the criminals were not dealt the same way. Abu Jahl was not dealt the same way. Abu Lahab was not dealt the same way. Fir'aun was not dealt the same way. Namrud was not dealt the same way. So that, 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 that so, 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 so there are people, they were dealt. There are people, they were not dealt. Okay? So, so the mujrimin, the criminals in general, Allah says, if I want it, what we do is we take the, we take the direction of Allama Taba Tabai, he generalizes everything. Yes, Allah says that if he wanted in dunya, he would have punished them this punishment, but he did not, majority of the criminals. He did not do this to majority, he did to a few criminals. On the day of judgment, if he would, he would have done this punishment to all the criminals, but he would not do to all. He would do to a few. So it is, there is no problem. Ayatollah Nasser Makarim is okay. Other Mufassirin who said the theme is the theme of Day of Judgment is okay. And according to the generalization, this Allah's, Allah would have punished them in this world, majority of them. He did not. Allah can punish this kind of punishment in the hereafter to the majority of the criminals, but he would not do. So that is, that is how we try to keep uh, meaning general. And God knows the best. God knows the best. There are other opinions. I have left it. You can further go because our time is short. So we take the main theme. Ayatollah Nasser Makarim, the reason he said uh, the theme, because the theme has diverted from the year after, uh, here until Ayat 65, it was here after. Then this Ayat talks about dunya, that woman nu'ammirhu nunakkisu fil khalq. Those people who we bring them up, we can bring them down. You guys are in my hand, God says. God says, you go devil, uh, you go become healthier, become stronger. I zap you with a coronavirus, you come down. Usually, normally people, they reach to an age and the decline starts to happen. However, Allah says, if I want, I can zap you anytime and I can bring you down, okay? And you don't live like this COVID-19 cases and all the other earthquake cases and tsunami cases and all this. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, it is in his hand. We can't, there are people that are expecting to live 60, 70 years and they left. Corona took them away. Corona is God's uh, Corona, uh, the, the angel of death and came and took away through the coronavirus. So Allah took him away. So therefore, وَمَنْ نُعَمِّرْهُ نُعَمِّرْ is building from Imara. Uh, development, we bring them up, nunakkes, we bring them down. Nunakkes, like for example, if you have like a, a plate, you see, uh, like 
you do like this, you said nekkes, okay? Nekkesa. So something which is like this, you bring it like this. So the upside down. So we bring people up, we can bring them down. So people, they go up, they come down. Now we need to understand there are two types of development, physical development, spiritual development. So there are people, they go physical development and their spiritual development is already down or they go spiritual development and their physical developments come down, curves down, the spiritual development becomes worse and become messier. The more they grow old, the more they grow wicked, okay? You see the Prophet Sallallahu the elder people, they were on the front, forefront fighting the Prophet, like Abu Jal, the elderlies of the Quraysh, okay? Even in the time of Amir al-Mu'minin the elderlies were forefront opposing Amir al-Mu'minin. Uh, you see the, the history, majority of those who oppose and are wicked, the youngsters, they will not believe, but they will not have this wicked nature. The wicked nature comes from old people many times, not all, many times, elderly, elderly people, they have this wickedness. So they grow old and the wickedness, they come down and then wickedness also increases. That means spiritually also they're coming down. But there are people, even physically, they will come down, spiritually they will develop, 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 develop up. Okay, so this is, <clears throat> there are two surahs, they have pointed out this kind of thing. Our duty is to maintain our development spiritually, not allow shaitan to recline and de decline and uh, uh, make it, bring it back down. No, we need to go up, okay? Develop our spirituality the best we can. It is obligation for everybody. So <clears throat> there are two surahs, they echo this ayat. So if I ask you, I, uh, I don't know what should I ask you, okay? So if I ask you, on the day of judgment, uh, or, 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 no, not on the day of, because there's too much tafsir. So remember, afala yaqilun, don't they apply the reason? Whenever Allah says the word yaqilun, that means this ayat have so many directions. You have to put your thought process and ponder and reflect. That's why mufassirin, they went into so many details because of these two ayat, 66 and 67. And 67, remember, they cannot go, they cannot go back. And in the beginning, Ja'alna min bainians, wall in front of them, barrier in behind them, barrier in front of them, so they cannot go front, they cannot. So these are kind of connections worth of pondering more and more. So afala ya'qilun. So now uh, this echo, waman nu'amiru nunakiso is echoed. So here, if I will ask you a question, what is the meaning of uh, tamasna? You will say blotting of the eyes, like total wipe of the eye, okay? So that can be one of the questions. Uh, and then second question can be that which surahs in the Quran echoes this ayat 68 of Surah Yasin? Ayat 68, Surah Yasin. Or I can ask you uh, which ayat of Surah Yasin echoes Surah Wattin and Surah Al Asr. So I can ask you opposite. So just focus on uh, what they say, uh, ayat 68, 68, okay, 68, and focus on surat at teen, uh, fig, you can write fig, you can write teen, it will be okay, and surat al-asr, so by the time, so this coming up and then declining has been mentioned in these two surahs, like, for example, for surat at teen, bismillah rahman rahim what a nice baby comes cute you know even uh, it uh, messes up with this diaper but still it's cute and you, you are always attracted with the cuteness of the small kids and uh, children so the beautiful image eyes everything is perfect everything is like in a so allah has created us physically in nice and yet also given us intellect, that means ma metaphysically also Allah has created us in the best of creation. He gave us this physical amazing abilities plus intellectual amazing ab abilities. So ahsani taqweem, the best of forms. Then it declines, okay? It comes back into declination. However, remember there are two declinations. So if your physical de declination happens, but your spiritual declinations go, then you will be rewarded in this world and the world after. Except for those, everybody's going to decline. Okay, 
that means this verse is talking about the intellectual capacity, spiritual capacity. That means everything is going to decline. Spiritual uh, met, uh, metaphysical uh, structure form is also going to decline. But there are people, their metaphysical structure is going to take them towards Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's pleasure. Except for those who believe and did the good deed, for them, there is a reward which is everlasting reward, endless reward, unthinkable reward. The more mamnoon means like uh, you, uh, you know, the, the, you will never be able to thank the reward which you are going to be given in this world and the world hereafter. So unthankable reward, غير mamnoon. Is it when we say mamnoon, mamnoon ilak? I'm thankful to you. I'm thankful to you. Uh, uh, I am indebted to you. You have done favor upon me. So I will never forget your favor. What kind of favors you will remember from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's favor? Never. Just غير mamnoon, غير mamnoon. Never, never. You will never be able to be thanked properly. It's endless, everlasting. And then Surah Al-Asr tells us, by the time, and it has a lot of different interpretations. It's not our uh, area today. But let's take the one which echoes Surah Yasin. In al insan lafi khusr. Verily, the human being is in decline. This is physical declination and metaphysical declination. However, the metaphysical declination can be uh, adjusted to go continue into development, into uh, uh, into rising to the uh, to the pleasure of Allah Subhanahu wa Taala, to the best of uh, for, formations like structure, development of the spiritual, that means spirituality itself. And who are these who are not in loss? Everybody is in loss, physically, metaphysically. However, metaphysically, there are people, they are not in loss. Who are they? Except for those who believe. Remember Surah Al-Tin? And then, And do good deed. Okay? وَعَمِلُوا الصَّالِحَةِ Do good deed. فَلَهُمْ أَجْرٌ غَيْرُ مَمْنُونَ وَتَوَاصَوْ بِالْحَقِّ وَتَوَاصَوْ بِالصَّبْرِ So here Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala added, uh, this is incompatible with the time. Okay? Continuously du du during their time. So there's a consistency here. And that is, inshallah, we're going to take in the tafsir of Surah Al-Asr. At this point, we have just... Uh, so how many descriptions uh, are for those? If I ask you, what are the description for those people who are... Uh, who are not going to decline, you're going to tell me faith and good deed, iman and good deed. If I ask you this question, what are the two things which prevents a person from de decline, being declined uh, metaphysically? Then you will tell me the faith. Faith by itself is not enough. Good deeds are needed. Icing on the cake. Your faith is the cake. And icing on the cake is your good deeds. وآخر دعوان الحمد لله رب العالمين وصلى الله على محمد وآله الطيبين الطاهرين عظم الله أجورنا وأجوركم. As I said, please seek opportunities to go. There are so many majalis happening online. I'm also going to go in a majlis, inshallah, in Urdu. But uh, you can seek majalis uh, in English and Arabic. And for those Swedish, we don't have that many options online. So inshallah, in two minutes, we are starting the Swedish uh, Majalis, so please stay tuned. Um, 